Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT Official Guide 2022. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need this. Always make sure the book is in front of you when you're working with me. Today we're going to solve some problems that you will find on page number 143 and 144, big number 201. Let's take a look at it. In 201 we are told that we have 3 million dollars in royalties on 20 million dollar sales. We are told further that the following year, the next year, we had a 9 million dollar in royalties on 108 million dollar sales. The question simply is by approximately what percentage did the ratio change? By approximately what the ratio of ratio of uh, royalties to sales. By approximately what percentage did the ratio of royalties to sales drop? It says by by approximately what percentage did it drop? Let's take a look at it. There are two ways we can go about it. One way is to actually do it out in a classical way, traditional way, the orthodox way, the geeky way, the nerdy way, the proper way. Other way always is to find a quick and dirty method. I'm going to show you the quick and dirty method first. And then if you insist, we'll do it the classical way. The quick and dirty method is very simple. We have $3 million profit on a sale of 20 million. 3 out of 10 would have been 30%. 3 out of 20 is 15%. That's very straightforward. Then the following year, we had a $9 million, $9 million profit on $108 million sales. Just divide top and bottom by 9. 9 is going to go away, 10 is made up of 1 9, after we take away 9 from the 10, we have a remainder of 1, that 1 goes and joins the 8, becomes 18, and 8 is made up of 2 9, so it's 1 12. The question is, how much is 1 12 in percentage? Well, we know, we know that 1 third is exactly 33 and 1 third percent. If, it, if 1 third is exactly 1 33 and 1 third percent, let's just say it's approximately 32 percent. If one third is, exact, is approximately 32%, that implies that one sixth is approximately half of that, 16%. And that in turn implies that one twelfth is approximately 8%. So here we are going from 15% to 8%. And now, at this point, at this point, the problem boils down to a very, very simple percentage problem. All they're asking us is that how much is the drop in terms of percentage if you were to go from 15 to 8. If you have a number and that number drops from 15 to 8, what's the percentage drop? Well, 15 to 8, that's a drop of 7 out of 15. Out of 15, because that's what we started out with. We know 7 out of half, we know it's exactly 50%. We don't have 7 and a half. We don't have 7 and a half. We have 7, which means, which means that whatever this is, is something less than 50. Slightly less than 50. How much was the percentage drop? The answer is slightly less than 50. There's only going to be one answer choice that's slightly less than 150. If you look at the answer choices, uh, two, 201. If you look at the answer choices, we have 8, 15, 45, 8, 15, 45, 52, and 56. And we're looking for something that's slightly less than 50, but that's your answer, 45. Okay, keep in mind that we're looking for slightly less than 50, not slightly more than 50. Because 7.5 out of 15 is exactly 50%. Therefore, 7 out of 15 is something less than 50. So that's one way of doing it. Other way is to actually do out the calculation. Actually do it out. Which, of course, will require a lot more work and a lot more time. But here's what's going on. We are going from 3 out of three out of 20 to 9 out of 108, which we just did it. It comes down to 112. And we want to find out the percentage change from here to here. How do we do percentage change? Just like before, 
we went from 15 to 7, that was a difference, 15 to 8, that was a difference of 7. Here we have to find out the difference. So 328 minus 112, and you divide that by the original number, which is this guy. We started out with 328, and that's the calculation we have to do. That's all. Find the common denominator, 20 times 20 times 12, 20 times 12, 12 times 3 is 36, 20 times 1 is 20, and here we have 3 over 20, and that falls down to 16, 16 20, 16, 16 over 20 times 12, over 3 times 20. Are you with me? We're going to have to continue. As you can see, the 20 is going to go away, and we are left with, let's continue here, we are left with 16 over 3 times 12. That's going to be 3, that's going to be 4, so we end up with 4 ninth, 4 ninth, and we know 1 ninth is approximately 11%. And when I say we know, I mean you should know. 1 ninth is approximately 11%, 1 eleventh is approximately 9%. 1 ninth is approximately 11%, therefore 4 ninth, it's going to be about 44%. And therefore the answer is, oh I erased it, the answer was 45. So that's one way of doing about it, which of course as you can see is a lot more, I wouldn't do it. Just do the quick and dirty way, quick and dirty way, just take, takes a few seconds. We're just fi trying to figure out what's the percentage change going from 15 to 8, or 15 to 8 is a drop of 7, 7 out of 15 is less than, less, slightly less than 50%, and you're done. The next problem I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to describe to you what it is and if hopefully you will have the book in front of you. We have a bathroom, we're dealing with a bathroom in which the light comes on every time the door is open or shut. And when the light comes on in the bathroom, it stays on for 15 minutes. Timer is set for 15 minutes. Timer is set. Timer is set for 15 minutes. This is 2 or 2. So here are the times when the light comes on. We have 8 o'clock, 8.03, 8.04, 8.04. We have no choice but to write all of them out. 8.06, 8.10, 8.18, 8.19, 8.20, 8.21, 8.22, 8.23, 8.24, 8.25, 8.26, 8.27, 8.28, 8.29, 8.30, 8.31, 8.32, 8.33, 8.34, 8.35, 
out of this 23 minutes the light stays off for 8 minutes because the first 15 minutes the light is on it stays on for 15 minutes so here's the first time when the light is going to go off for 8 minutes until the door is open or shut again which happens at 857 so when when this happens the light comes on again this is difference only 3 minutes light stays on when we go from 57 to 57 to 905 just less than 15 minutes that's only 6 minutes here's the next one 29 29 minus 11 that's going to be 8 18 minutes there we go so it stays off for 3 minutes here and the last time it happens is right here from 31 to 10 o'clock 9.31 to 10 o'clock let's call this 3 so this is this is this is situation number 2 that's the sixth, third situation and that's 29 minutes from 9.31 to 10 o'clock that's 29 minutes minus 15 that's going to give us 14 minutes it's going to stay off for 14 minutes that's the third time the light goes off we just have to add them up 8 8 3 and 14 11 plus 4 is uh, 15 5 there you go it looks like the light is going to stay off for a total of 15 minutes in this two hour period as you can see the math is not very complicated here the math is very straightforward all they're trying to see here is how well you can think under pressure. That's all it is. They just want to see your thinking process. Not only they're trying to see our thinking process, but the thinking process under pressure. Number number 203. Number 203, we have a parallelogram. We have a parallelogram and we are told We are told that the all sides of the spherograms are equal. All sides are equal. Let's make a note. All sides are equal. We'll come to that in a second. Here's the question. The question is, we're looking for the ratio of the, which one goes first on the top? Shorter diagonal. We're looking for the ratio of shorter diagonal to the longer diagonal. That's the ratio we're looking for. So here's the longer diagonal and here's the shorter diagonal. Those are the ratios we're looking for. Let's start with a longer diagonal. Let's start with a longer diagonal right here. So, the easiest way to do figure out the length of this diagonal from here to here is to work on this half right here from up to here. Let's call this triangle A, B, and C. Now, since this is 120, they are all 120. So, this here, when we when we cut this thing. This, this guy is 120 degrees and this guy is 120 degrees and this is 60 and this is 60. So when you cut it in half, this becomes 30 degrees, this becomes 60 degrees and this of course is the right angle. So we are, we are dealing with only half this angle. Do you understand? So in this triangle, as you can see, A to C is the hypotenuse. A to C is the hypotenuse. What we are interested in finding out is this side. And we know, so this is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. We know in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the sides are in, a, are in the ratio of, this is how I remember it. This is how I do it. Since there are three angles, 30, 60, and 90, I write down one, two, and three. And then on the last one, you put a root sign. And you, then you arrange them in the order of uh, uh, it's least to the greatest. One is the smallest number, which faces the smallest angle. The smallest angle here is three. So B to C is one. If B to C is one, then the largest one, this 2 is the largest one, which is going to face a 90 degree, which is 2. And this guy, root 3, is going to face 60 degree angle, which is this guy. Which is what we are interested in. Which means that the way it is set up here, A to B is root 3. If A to B is root 3, that means A to this guy, the entire long diagonal, the longer diagonal is going to be 2 times root 3. The longer diagonal is going to be 2 times root 3. Because this guy is from here to here. Now we have to figure out a shorter diagonal. For the shorter diagonal, if this side is 2, if A to C is 2, and since all sides are equal, this side is 2, and this side is 2, and this side is 2, and so it's from here to here. Because this side has to equal this side because they're both 60 degrees. Which means if this is 1, this is 1 obviously. So this, this side here, let's call it D, D to C is 2. The 2 drops out, and we end up with a ratio of 1 to root 3. 
That's all. That was 203. 204. In 204, we are told that P is the product of all integers 1 to 30 inclusive including 1 including 30 in other words p is just it's just a very fancy way of saying p is just 30 factorials p is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times all the way up to 29 times 30 the question is what is what is the greatest integer k what is the greatest integer k for which 3 raised to k is a factor of p. In other words, if we take this, if we take this quantity p, if we take this quantity p, which is a very large number, p is equal to 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 all the way to 30, it's a very large number. If you were to take that quantity p, and divided by 3, of course, that's an, that's equal to, that is an integer. In other words, p is a factor of, 3 is a factor of p. And so is 3 squared. As you can see, 9 is going to appear here. So is 3 to the 3. 27 by, will appear here. You can divide the divide entire quantity by 27, actually more than 27. The question is, what's the largest value of p, k can be found? What's the greatest integer k for which 3 raised to k is a factor of p? Can we divide p by 3 raised to 3, the answer is yes. Can we divide it by 3 raised to 30, 3 raised to 20, 20 raised to 18? What's the largest number k so that p divided by 3 raised to k is an integer? Let's find out, shall we? So p is simply, so what we're going to do here is we're going to simply list all the numbers, all the numbers that are multiples of 3 that fall between 1 to 30, all of them. So here we go. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, and 30. Because it says inclusive. So we can't forget 30. 3 can be written simply as 3 raised to 1. 2, 6 is simply 2 times 3 raised to 1. 9 is 3 squared. 4 is 3 raised to 1. 5 is 15 is 5 times 3 raised to 1. 18 can be written as 2 times 9 with 3 raised to 2. This is 7 times 3 raised to 1. 24 can be written as 8 times 3 raised to 1. And 27 can be written as 3 raised to 3. And finally 30 can be written as 3 raised to 1 times 10. And all you have to do for find out is the value of k. That's the largest possible value of k that we're going to find. So here we go. We have 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 13, and 14. Looks to me that the largest value of k can be here is, oh, I forgot how many I counted. 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 14. In other words, p divided by 3 raised to 14 would be an integer. But 3 raised to but p raised, p divided by 3 raised to 15 would not be an integer because it doesn't go into it. P divided by 3 raised to 14 is exactly is going to be exactly equal to 2 times 4 times 5 times 2 times 7 times 8 times 10. That is your answer. So the largest value is 14. 3 205. We have we are told that n is equal to 3 raised to 8 minus 2 raised to 8. As you can clearly see right from the beginning, that this question is going to talk about the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares, just to remind you memory, we know is equal to a squared minus b squared is simply a plus b times a minus b. That's what we're dealing with here. The question is which is which of the following, which is not a factor 
of n. And here are our other choices 97, 65, 35, 13, and 5. There are five other choices. Which of these five numbers is not a factor of n? In other words, can we divide n evenly into 97 or 65 and so forth? So let's continue. So this guy here can be written as n is equal to 3 raised to 4 plus 2 raised to 4, that's your a plus b, times a minus b, 3 raised to 4 minus 2 raised to 4. Let's see what that gives us. 3 raised to 4 is same as 3 squared times 3 squared, it's 9 times 9, that's 81. So it's 81 plus 16, 81 plus 16, that would be 97. Oh, there we go. We already know that n is equal to 97 times something. 97 times something. So 97 is a factor. So that works. Which of the following is not a factor of n? 97 is a factor of n because if n divided by 97 is going to give us this integer. Let's find out what that is. 3 s to 4 is again 81 minus 16. 81 minus 16. How much is that? 81 minus 16. 11 minus 6 is 5. 7 minus 1 is 6 is 65 which means which means n can evenly be divided by 65 when you divide n by 65 65 is going to go away we're going to get 97 so 65 is a factor of n 65 is a factor of n we also know that 65 is made up of 13 times 5 is made up of 5 thirteens which means we can divide it by 13 you can divide it by 5, but it does not divide evenly by 35. Which of the following is not a factor of uh, n? The answer is 35. 35 is not a factor of n. All the others are. We're going to stop right here. I'll meet you tomorrow, and we're going to pick up from where we left off. In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me to help you prepare for the exam, you can get hold of me very simply by sending me an email. Go to my website at keshwaniprep.com from there you can send me an email or there is a form there if you wish to fill out if you wish to tell me a little bit more about yourself and we'll talk some more all right i'll see you tomorrow okay bye now